How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is still topic 6.1, chemical kinetics, where we look at how we determine the reaction rate. You're gonna need a calculator and a ruler for this one. Let's go. Okay, 6.1, how do we determine the reaction rate? We look at how do we do that graphically and how do we do that numerically? That is work out the reaction rates. So the IB applications and skills is we need to analyze graphical and numerical data from rate experiments. We need to calculate reaction rates using tangents, which I'll show you. And then students need to be familiar with interpreting the graphs of concentration versus time and mass versus time or volume versus time. So let's first have a look at calculating the rates of reaction from a graph of a concentration versus time. If you have a look on the left hand side or the y axis, we've got our concentrations and our x axis contain our time in seconds. The one on the left is the concentration of reactants. The one on the right is the concentration of products. And we can see that the reactants goes down and the products goes up. So the question is, calculate the rate of reaction between 10 and 30 seconds for both graphs. So what we need to do is go on and look at the points on this graph and then apply our rate formula. Now our rate formula is the change in concentration of a reactant or product over time. And we never wanna have a negative number for a rate. So to work out the change in concentration, we would do 0.6 take away 0.2, and we would divide that by the time period, which in this case is 20 seconds. So doing that calculation, we have 0.02, and now I need to have a look at my units. Well, my units for the concentration were mole per decimeter cubed, and my unit for time was second. So it's mole per decimeter cubed per second. Now that is consumed, our reactants are being consumed, but we wouldn't put the negative there because we never have a negative reaction rate. For graph number two, we need to do the same thing. So we go and find the points on the graph at 10 and 30 seconds, and then we can work out the average rate. So the rate is equal to the change in concentrations of the products divided by the change in time. So the change in concentrations of the products for this one was 0.8, take away 0.3, divided by 20 seconds. So we have our rate as 0.025, and again, the units will be the same because we're working in mole per decimeter cubed and seconds. Now describe and explain the shape of the graphs. Well, if we have a look at the reactants graph, the first thing that we noticed is that the reactants are decreasing and it's decreasing fastest at the start of the reaction because we have a greater concentration of reactants. As we go th along the graph, we can see that those lines start to flatten out. As the concentration of the reactants decreases, so does the rate of reaction. So as the rate decreases, as the concentrations of the reactions decreased, that's because they're being used up. Our reactants are being turned into products, so there's less of them. So in inner reaction, the rate of reaction will be fastest at the start and then slowest towards the end. And eventually it might even form a flat line when the reaction has ceased. The products graph, we can see the same kind of thing, but just in reverse. Because we started off with no products, then the products are formed very, very quickly. As we go further along the graph, you can see that the production of products slows down because the amount of reactants that are available to react is getting smaller. Eventually, the graph will completely flatten out and that's when we know that the reaction has stopped. So as the reactants start to decrease, the rate of the formation of the products also starts to decrease. So in both cases, the rate was fastest at the start, either the rate of the products forming or the rate of the reactants reacting, that is, the fast, that is fastest at the start. We know that the graph on the left is the graph for the reactants because it's decreasing and the graph on the right must be from the products because it's increasing. Okay, the second example is where we need to use some data. So dinitrogen pentoxide decomposes over time to form nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. They've measured the concentrations over a certain time period and they gave us the table below on the right hand side. And then I went through and put it into Excel to get a nice little graph. Sometimes you might be asked to draw that graph or if they want you to use a graph, they'll give it to you on a nice grid. 
So determine the reaction rate at time equals 400 seconds. Now the key word here is at. At 400 seconds means they want you to draw a tangent at that point on the curve. So what we need to do here is get our ruler, find the location of the point at 400, and draw a really good tangent at that point. Now my tangent, I'm gonna try as best as I can. You'll probably be able to do a better job if you've got a bit of paper, but I've tried the best I can here. The easiest way to do the tangent is to extrapolate that tangent line to both the x and the y axes. And then when we're asked to determine the rate, the rate is just the gradient of that line. And if we use the points on the axes, we can usually do it a little bit more accurately than picking two points on the line. So what I can see now is I've got my two points on my axes and I can easily work out the gradient. So by finding the tangent at 400, uh, at 400 seconds, I'm now in a position to work out the rate by doing the change in concentration over the change in time. So I can see here that the change in concentration has gone from zero to two. So the change in concentration of N2O5 will be two mole per decimeter cubed. And then the time, well the time started at zero and is now 400, so our change in time is 400 seconds. So I plug this into my equation, I've got two take away zero, and then I've got 400, oh sorry, uh, 1200, sorry, 1200 take away zero. So now I'm in a position to find the gradient. So plugging that into the calculator and I get the value of 1.67 times 10 to the minus three and my units will be mole per decimeter cubed per second. The second part says to determine the rate of reaction at 1600 seconds. So again, this is the same process. The word at means we need to draw a tangent at 1600. So we go and find the point at 1600 and we draw a tangent on that curve. Again, I don't think I did a great job on the computer. It was a little bit hard, but do it on your bit of paper and you should be able to see where they connect to both the X and the Y axes and that will make your life a lot easier. Again, apply the formula, rate equals change in concentration over change in time, and then we're able to determine the rate at that particular time. So the change in concentration of N2O5 divided by the change in time will give us the rate at that point. So the change in concentration for this one, well, on my graph it looked to be about 0.75, and then the time period was all the way up to 2400. So it took 2400 seconds. Plugging that into the calculator, I got a value of 3.13 times 10 to the minus four mole per decimeter cubed per second. Again, the same units. And this kind of makes sense if you have a look at the two values. The, the first one, it had a greater value, so it's got a faster rate. It was at the start of the reaction. The second one has a much slower rate because it's near the end of the reaction. Now, if they were asking you to do this in an exam, there would be a range. They would have quite a big range of acceptable values, and they might even give you a really nice grid that helps a bit more. So don't be concerned if your values are just slightly different from mine. Okay, the final example. Iodate ions oxidize iodide ions to form iodine according to the equation below. IO3 minus is the iodate, I minus is the iodide, and I2 is iodine. So the first thing you needed to do for this question was be able to work out which thing is which, and then it's also a good idea to write them at the top. If a certain concentration of iodine is produced in the first two minutes, what is the initial rate of reaction in mole per decimeter cubed per second? Okay, so we're working with iodine first, and they told us the concentration, and they told us a time, but in the wrong units. So the change in concentration of I2, and it's a product, so it's forming, is 0.00251, because there was none at the start. And that formed in two minutes, but the, our unit needs to be in seconds, so that means I need to change this to 120 seconds. So my rate is simply my change in concentration, over my change in time. 
So in this case, it would be 0 0.00251 divided by 120. And that's gonna give me my rate of iodine production. The units for this reaction, they were told in the question, but we also need to remember that it's mole per decimeter cubed per second because we've changed the time to per second. And this is the one that they'll generally express the rate in. What is the rate at which iodate ions are consumed? Now, iodate is IO3 minus. Now, what this question is asking us to do is to use the stoichiometric ratio to work out the rate. So we're gonna go back to our little bit of stoichiometry and use the ratio to work that out. So the rate of IO3 minus consumption, because it's a reactant, well, what's the ratio between those two things? Well, it's a one to three. So it's a third. One over three times the rate of I2. So it'll be a third times the rate of the iodine production. So I plug that into my calculator and then I can work out the rate for the iodate. So the rate would be 6.97 times 10 to the minus 6 mole per decimeter cubed per second. We always need to make sure we write the units for any calculation question. The final one is what is the rate at which iodide ions are consumed? Now iodide is I minus. So we want to apply the same idea here. Use the ratio between the iodine and the iodide this time the ratio is five to three. So it's five over three times the rate of I2. Now I've kept using I2 here because that was the one they asked me to find first and I kept the number in my calculator so I didn't have any rounding errors and I would only round at the very end. So working that out, the rate of I minus consumption would be 3.49 times 10 to the minus five and the units will be the same, mole per decimeter cubed per second. Okay, some top tips. First of all, it's not math class. Use the axes, draw your tangent line, make it simple. Always remember the units and remember that with the graphs, as the concentration of the reactants goes down, the rate will also go down because we have less of them available to react. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.